Well, good evening and welcome to Soccer Zone. I'm Thomas Mlambo. This has been a historic week for the national team of South Africa. Bafana Bafana have beaten Nigeria for the first time ever in a competitive fixture. We got three points for the first time against the Super Eagles team. And it is absolutely, it tastes so sweet in my mouth. I can still enjoy it. It is fantastic. You are going to love the analysis that we've got for you tonight on the show. So stay with Soccer Zone as we look at that. This is not the only thing we'll be talking about, though, because the Playoffs uh, have been controversial, have been amazing. We've seen Oscarine Masiluke doing some good things and then some not so good things from a goalkeeping perspective. There's also the big controversy about should one of the goals be allowed? Should Leopards have lost that game? Should their keeper have been given protection by the referee? That is a conversation that our professori will get into. We'll fight about it. And our professori before the show, I don't know if we're going to have to buy him glasses or something because if what he told me before the show is true, where he says that in his opinion, Percy Tao was offside, I don't know. Stay with us to find out if he was telling the truth about that. This is the topic that we've got for you tonight on Soccer Zone. And you can see it on Twitter at Soccer Zone for sure. The topic is, how did Bafana Bafana achieve the historic victory against Nigeria? The hashtag is, hashtag Bafana New Era. And what are you saying about the hashtag Bafana New Era? Uh, Sabi Mutueni says, the coach knows Mzansi boys and their style. No one can stop Bafana Bafana with Baxter in the fray. Hashtag Bafana New Era. I know there are a couple more that were really interesting here. And uh, what well, we've got Mr. Duma who goes on to say, Baxter magic. Hashtag Bafana New Era. And Nazim then says, this Bafana Bafana squad reminds me of 1996 squad. They didn't fear Nigeria. Big up to the boys. Hashtag Bafana New Era. And they continue to come in and be very good. Because Dumi Saini says, with Baxter, it starts from the defense. And that was the key against the quality in Nigeria. Hashtag Bafana New Era. Dr. Mnandi. Hey, Nota. What a weekend. What a way to enjoy things, beating Nigeria. But tell us, what did you see? The Bafana New Era, what was it that made sure that success was achieved? History was made. Thank you, Tom London. I, I think first things first, we, we have to acknowledge Guti, for any athlete to, to go into the battle, he has to deal with you versus you, which I thought the boys individually, they've done it mentally. So that means mental battle was won. Mm. And now there's a steward factor factor that he brought the right attitude or marinate the willpower and the confidence woman did with chance. This, this is how we're going to play now with a lot of discipline. But what is what was key in this game, the, the longer the game carried on in the first half that we didn't concede, mm. it frustrated Nigeria. So let your key. But key out ties in a pelea man who key and I won't get into the end in the But also, there was a bit of there and there. And uh, tell me, I, I tell you what, the, the more story momentum, the more Ushugela is into because Upaksa is a fan, is a fan of Ushugela. I got pushing upon. But also, I think also we took our chances. Normally, it's a creator or anti, it takes them maybe 10 chances for Ish. them to just score one. Ish. But in this game, they. The chances, the two chances that we got, punished. And you know what? It gave us confidence into the game. But also what's, what was important, we played to a philosophical pact, which is transition. We sat and waited for them to come at us. Then we must say, must put, must put my explosive because Vele, Spanipi, There was another key word for me that uh, Stuart Baxter brought. That word is effective. Yeah, one of Stuart Baxter's team, if you look back at when he was at Kaiser Chiefs, you probably won't remember that time as the most stylish, most amazing, most exhilarating football ever, but effective. They were always effective. That's what Bafana Bafana were, effective. You care mover, effective in the midfield, put the ball in the back of the net. That's a couple of our opinions. We want them from you as well. Hashtag Bafana New Era. What was it that gave Bafana the edge against Nigeria this time around? Let's go on to uh, the press conference that took place earlier on. SABC Sport were there for you. Stuart Baxter doing the press conference, throwing forward to tomorrow. Big game against Zambia. Others will get a chance. And also looking back at what he thought the reasons were the new era, and what made Nigeria able to be defeated by South Africa. Take a listen. Obviously, we're really pleased with the results of the game, and, uh, and I'm pleased with the way the players played. I think the uh, after the first 20 minutes, in the first 20, I think we defended, we defended well, but we, we didn't open the field. We, we had the, 
we locked ourselves into one side of the field and, and they could get pressure on the ball and we gave the ball away a lot. And then the longer the game went, the more we opened the field and the more they had problems with our movement. And we found lots of space both between and behind their defenders. So I thought the, the, the lads did really, really well. And I thought that to, to finish up, uh, Nigeria can't complain that a team that scores two goals, hits the post twice and has a 100% penalty and probably misses a couple of great chances. They can't grumble that they only lose 2-0. I'm looking at I'm looking at the Zambia game and we've got to really spread that through the squad. And so we're looking at we're looking at the Zambia Zambia game more more in terms of development and that it won't be it won't be an unimportant game for us because we want to see we want to give games to the likes of Lorenzo and uh, and Riva and uh, Obi and Goma and Mubara and the young the younger ones so it's a little, maybe a little bit of a look into the future of, of Bafana Bafana Hashtag Bafana New Era is what we're talking on the show tonight. Tomorrow against Zambia. Well, there you have it. It's coming from uh, the Murulong Stadium. It's live. It's at uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. And you can catch it right here on SABC1. It's going to be a good one. The update that we've got for you with news is Lucky Baloi has been uh, terminated at Kaiser Chiefs. He's been given a free clearance. Uh, the man they call Sheriff played seven games in the APSA Premiership uh, and really didn't make a name for him. But the funny thing is, Dr. Mnandi, is that they gave him an extension to his contract. His contract was until 2019. Now they're saying, uh, it seems, we made a mistake. Why? Maybe making a communication breakdown between the team and the coach because the coach is the one who recommends. So, the coach is saying, I'm not going to use him because he's got maybe other plans. And normally, these are the case that I'm a player they, fi they find themselves in. Only 26 years of age, he's got his clearance in his hand, and he's negotiated a way out of Kaiser Chiefs. Lucky Beloy will see which team decides to pick him up. He's definitely the kind of quality that shouldn't sit out of the game for too long. Moving on, though, the other big story, Dr. Mnani, this one tomorrow, I think, is going to break the internet because the word on the street that we're hearing, uh, if you look at Media 24, other news outlets are already predicting it. Who will be the new coach of uh, Cape Town City? My highlights number one was Chelago Tupeni will be the coach of uh, uh, Cape Town City. But obviously, if you look at the continuity, I mean, Tupeni is from Cape Town and he just qualified to put to pay to pay the Onkama document, UEFA A license. So it tells you the Onkin to point out, and it will be a good thing for Cape Town City to have a player, like, a coach like Tupeni, because also now players will relate easily now to Tupeni. Well, that's what we're hearing. Uh, if you know the facts, tell us as well. If you have the absolute fact of the matter, we are being told, though, and other news broadcasts are already putting it as fact. Tomorrow, Benny McCarthy will be announced as the coach of Cape Town City. It will really make for interesting football next season. Can you imagine those interviews? Let's move on, though, to our Nandi moment of the week. Now, this week of Nandi Moment of the Week, Stuart Baxter was coach of Bafana Bafana uh, 2004 to 2005. He played 23 games uh, with the national team then, and then he won 10 games. One of those games was against? Nigeria. Friendly. I wasn't a friendly. No, but he, but he beat Nigeria. He's, yeah, but he's not a friendly. You go a friendly because, but for me, because when we profile we profile but I still believe it was not a friendly. For there are that. some moments of it. Yeah. Baxter in charge. Mkonza on the field back then yeah. in that uh, days. And then, uh, well, he's gone on now. So he's the only coach that's ever coached Bafana Bafana yeah. that has beaten Nigeria two times now. I think it was evident enough for, for, for everyone to see what, what is pro, pro, Baxter brought and to be able to beat Nigeria. Because remember, in Nigeria, with the start, starting teams, I mean, I'm a player who are playing from Leicester, all these other teams are, are, around Europe. So Baxter is the guy who brought in that self-confidence from, from Amachi. I mean, I know people undermine PSL, but PSL is a very strong league. But I can tell you now, Baxter has brought in willpower, confidence, Guma player. You could see we were playing without fear in this game. Kuna zintes ning e game in. Rantia ukorile, uta ukorile. Wena, you have gone from Nandi moment of the week. Yeah. Stuart Baxter? Yeah. Showcase? Nine nine. We, what about him? Um Nandi, delicious. Stuart Baxter, <laughs> it's official. Um Nandi. Now. We're looking forward to the fifth round of Smirnov Rachabola Provincial League matches, which will be taking place on Saturday, the 17th of June in Fulukwani at the Sishekho Sports Fields. We 
have plenty of gold taking place. There's celebrations. They all happened in Cape Town, in Bloemfontein, PE, and in Durban. Now, it's your turn, Bulogwani. The top teams are all vying to be crowned the Raja Bolo champion at the finals in Gauteng on the 1st of July. The grand prize on the 1st of July will be 100, 150,000 rand, while the runners-up will receive 50,000 rand. Come support your team. Try your luck with the skills challenge and have a chance to meet our Smirnov Raja Bolo Kings, Smusi Sozuma, Benedict Villegas. You saw him scoring there for Bafana Bafana back in the days. Stanton Fredericks, Tawon Gomeni, as well as Paula Lindlanya. And enjoy the entertainment. There's DJs. The gates open at 12 o'clock and the entrance is free because with Smirnoff, everyone is invited. Remember to purchase any bottle of Smirnoff, 18, 18, 17, uh, 750 mils, and you stand a chance to win your share of two and a half million rand in instant prizes. Uh, and as well, Disky Gear will be also included there. Uh, that is how you can do it. Smirnoff Raja Bolo is what it's all about. How do you enter? Well, you buy your 750 uh, milliliter bottle of Smirnoff 1880, unscrew the cap, and find the code on the bottle. Uh, dial star 120 star 1083 hash. Register and enter the code. Here's a clip of the action that went down at the third round of provincial matches in Port Elizabeth, where Speakeasy Tavern defeated Mavela's Tavern 1 0 in the final. Take a look and enjoy. You can follow all the Raja Bolo action and keep up to date with all the Disky news and fixtures by visiting Smirnoff 1818 Clubhouse on Facebook and on Twitter and by signing up on our Moby site, 1818clubhouse.moby. So Smirnoff, everyone is invited. It's time for a break. After the break, we go to the Carling Corner. We update you as to what's going on there. Bafana Bafana comes under the spotlight. There's so much to talk about in the playoffs. This is Soccer Zone. <laughs> The journey to the Carling Black Label Champion Cup match day continues. Today, we take a look at 25-year-old KwaZulu Natal-based Kaiser Chief supporter Samkele Lamini, as well as Gauteng-based 35-year-old Orlando Pirates fanatic Temba Zwani. Let's get straight into it. Kaiser hey, Chiefs, like since from now, I understand the ball. Like I can't call it supporter Kuni case. There were times, okay, oh mama, oh baby, party, so mama, so oh mama, baby, party, see, you know, call it baby, party, like it's cool, like I, my girl, the kids on the party, uzo na kuzo, uzo, oh my age, we party, shooting as a pair, shooting as, me let's see, bonus is like Anja. Yo, I wanna, hey, I wanna, I love so much, we gonna play, like I love so much, we gonna play, more than just. Yeah, the vibe that yeah, the Ghanaians are for. I mean, I'm like, I'm not even experienced that before. But in the competition, I think I'm, I'm, I'm one step closer to the Ghanaian experience. I mean, it's for me. Since we seven this during this derby, I would like to use a four-three-three. It's a very demanding uh, formation, and it requires a lot of hard work from the players. And for me, it's an attacking formation. My strength as a coach, I was like, 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 I I 2015 I was here, um, 2017 I'm back again. It speaks to the, the love that I have for my team. 
So it would uh, we all define it as a, a culture of South African. It, it always reveal hidden fans, uh, people that you didn't know that they, they follow football. But because of the, the strength that they have, the passion that it has got, it always inspires people. If I'm being selected to be the final champion coach, I would love to use the formation of 442. You must remember this 442, it helps Pirates uh, to win uh, a, a double, triple uh, a champion in back to back. With this 442 formation, uh, will be the one victorious. I'm a coach that believes in uh, uh, tactical discipline. I'm a coach that believes in professionalism. Sometimes you find the players that there are, it's the first time for them to play the derby, so they don't have that confidence. Uh, so as a coach, you need to be there to pick them up and give them the confidence to move forward. This campaign is one of the kind uh, in this country and in the world. You take a fan from the stands uh, to put the fan next to the coach. We are humbled by the initiative. We would like to thank Kalim Playful to continue more and more and giving us this opportunity. The conversation about your team's formation and starting lineup continues on Twitter. Don't forget to use the hashtag Carling Cup and remember that you can still turn your coaching dreams into a reality. Make sure you tune in onto your favorite SABC radio station for the competition and stand a chance to be the champion coach. Get straight to the playoffs. Uh, it's all action there. Sad news for those fans of Stellenbosch uh, because Stellenbosch are out. They can no longer make it to the Absa Premiership uh, next season because of the results that took place. Uh, but it's still all systems go for two of the clubs. The Limpopo sides uh, with uh, Leopards as well as Barocca. They're in with a chance. But in the driving seat is Barocca. This is how they did it in the last two games. It is indeed a crucial game for these two sides here. Yeah. A winner here yeah, for me will mean they have a huge advantage given the fact that the first games for these two sides all played out in draws against Stellenbosch FC. So it is indeed a match that one knows. You win this one, you are in, in a good chance because you'll now have four points and two more than the team that is currently in the lock as far as uh, the side of FC of Stellenbosch is concerned. Seven wins in between, only one draw. To Pisto, this man has done ever so well. Now, Barocca in the penalty area, and the keeper comes out. He's on the ground, that's opportunity. Oh, the opening goal! The goalkeeper thought he was going to get assisted from the referee, but the ref is calling him, and he's seeing that it is a good assignment. Congo, I tell you, he, the goalkeeper went down after getting a knock. And the referee allowed Pay to continue. The first side official said it's okay, they can continue playing. Richard Matoga, Reforabare, advantage. Pula Utaraka Carlo, and he did it! Rata! Vitali Tualo! Rata, Conkele, Kawanale. Mezzi. Arbonne Leopard. Kuletan Nakozi. Aba Fasafa! Oscarin Masuluke! We do make them of fit at the cano. Good afternoon and welcome to the Pitamokaba Stadium. It is the promotional playoff 2017 match between Barocca FC and the Stellenbosch FC. And now a chance here for Barocca to try and take the lead. Here's Matoja's ball. from the defense as well as the goalkeeper was second to none once again Khaswani 
Kupov, se è monitorato, Kupov, the goalkeeper! El Said saved the day! Then there was Black Aces in 2009 and Bay United. You remember Bay United? They did it in 2008. So six out of the 12. Chance! Right, so there it is. This is what the log situation looks like. Dr. Nandi Barocca are in the driving seat. In fact, on Wednesday, they could be uh, back in the APSA Premiership next season. And if you look at it, they, they only need to get one point. And well, on Wednesday, play. it's not even up to them. I mean, they can just watch that game between yeah. uh, Stellenbosch and Black Leopards. Yeah. If Leopards don't win there, it's over. It's value is shop. What do you think will happen, though? I think the game is over 0-0. They'll pass and play Stellenbosch. Really? Cash. That means that then Morocco will be back in the Premiership next season? It will be, but Leopards, I think, gave it away. Now it's Stellenbosch, in a, in a, in a sense. Because if we pick a Kremlin, Stellenbosch, those two, those two, two games that they could have won. Shop might be key, There's right? another side to that, though, because if Leopards win that game, and you might find that Stellenbosch have given up, they know they're out already, they can win there, then it becomes a real cup final in that final game in the playoffs uh, as Barocca play on Leopards. Leopards knowing they have to beat Barocca there to go back. But let's get a look at this uh, controversial moment because this was key. Yeah. Oscar Rin must look in, knocks a long ball forward, yeah. and then you see uh, Sipumwethi gets a little knee in the face of uh, the goalkeeper, uh, or Tyson. Yeah, but, but the situation, you know, I've watched it over the weekend and I felt good it was a foul, but now he pinned a Kren Kren Van Dag. Now I'm going to see some highlights of Kren Kren Abur Tyson. Look here, he's pulling his leg away first. Yeah. Not, it doesn't it, look like he's trying anything. Inter intent was not to harm the And the referee team. has three things to look at, yeah. according to what uh, some of us have read. Yeah. Was it careless? Was it reckless? Was it excessive force? Yeah. Now, what are you saying? Was it careless? No. Why? Being a goalkeeper, he was trying to avoid the keeper. Was he, he reckless? No. Because he was trying to avoid the keeper? Yeah. And he didn't use excessive force? No, no chance. So you think the referee was okay to say, carry on? Carry on. That's man. your perspective. It was supposed to go to Ibaroka, it's okay, sharp. Man, you keep away with Lumele, this keeper will be able to play play, but they didn't. That's Dr. Mnandi. What does our babes when Bempe have to say? So we've given our amateur perspective here. What do you think? I'm glad that you accept that it's an amateur <laughs> approach. <laughs> we will okay, give you the law oh, without oh, fear oh. or favor. <laughs> and this is actually worrisome to us. And I know the referee is feeling terrible and cut up as far as this is concerned. And when a and contact is made, we look at the repercussions. We are not psychologists. We don't look at what happens. Now, what, what we are going to show you is how far the referee was, and he was over 30 meters away. That's 30.7 or 30.9 meters away. We will indicate, and he missed this one completely, and the assistant referee, it was on the blind side of the assistant referee, that's 30.7 meters so away. He did, not see it, he did not see the incident, because if he had seen the incident, that goalkeeper is concussed. Mount Lalei boxing, we asked Mabak Shang in the Nyal Pagama Uile, you are out, out of it. And he was totally concussed. What about reckless, careless, or excessive force? He did not force. see it. This time, once again, we say to you, we, do, we are not psychologists. FIFA indicates that to us. He was not psychologist. He should have exercised more restraint, and it was not enough because he did make contact with the goalkeeper's head. More restraint? And he would have yeah. to chop up his leg no, to get not more a chance, restraint. Not Look, a he's chance, trying to Thomas, avoid it. Thomas, this is very serious. Look at it. Look at it. He's this trying is very to. He's the, not, knee, the knee went in there. But he's trying to pull his leg away. He from. may have Can tried. You, he's he trying did not to get do enough, and he did make contact. That's the important but thing. But was it reckless? So was it careless? It, or absolutely. Was it you, would give, you would give it within your, your careless and your reckless. But contact was made and the man was concussed. And let me tell, and the important thing here is, if at all the referee hasn't seen it, he was depending on the assistant referee side. Unfortunately, it was on the blind side of the assistant referee. So we must be very clear on the facts of the law. That was supposed to have been stopped. The one thing that's yeah. very difficult there, Prof, is that it was a long ball forward. It was very difficult for the ref. The keeper kicks it forward for him to be to in a better it. position. That's why we have to show the distance, Thomas, so that we are fair to the referee. He couldn't have been in he a better position. He couldn't have seen it. And th sometimes that's why we bank on the ref, assistant referee to give you that decision. So, the so there's no way. You get caught up sometimes, unfortunately. <laughs> and this was a long ball. Uh. And, and he's a good sprinter. This was one of our top referees. Oh, he's a good ball. sprinter. And we will. You've got more? 
We're going to come back to you, Prof. We've got more okay. from you, but let's move on and uh, take a look at how it was that uh, uh, the uh, goals came in the game. And in terms of the defense here from Black Leopards, this is poor, Dr. Mnandi. Look, really poor defending. Poor defending from, from Black Leopards, and it tells you good. In defense, for you to be strong in defense, you need to work on your defense and understand the movements. Because you look at six defenders there, they can't deal with two poor players in the box. Nobody's for, watching. Not, everybody's watching a big screen, but they they're worried about themselves. But Peggy keep a big screen. You allow Little to get in front and to get a header. And you look at me of this magnitude. Mm. What do you expect? And trust me, that's the kind of defending that doesn't get you into the premiership. You need to be more organized and something as basic as ball watching. That's what they say, ball watching. Yeah. You don't commit ball watching. You watch where uh, players are in the box. It didn't happen there for uh, yeah. Leopards. And that's how the brace came as far as Letuala is concerned. Now, before the playoff started, you were quite clear saying Oscarin Masaluke needs to do a big job in order to keep Barocca in the uh, uh, playoffs and also to keep them in the premiership. Yeah, I think he's got away with Mehta because Barocca already they are on top, but for me, the mistakes are in that. Maybe for you, Carofona says probably my no. Julio Carofona also in the Spanish secret because some of the mistakes that at this level there is no way can my make such a mistake. Because what if, what if, like, that, that is why I get to see Oscar in a now that you part with the Baroque Guma playoff because most mistakes that he has no. been making are my mistakes that at this level definitely cannot make them. But his coach says he's amongst the best in the world, he says he's going to finish the playoffs, he's the number one keeper at Baroca. And when I'm going to tell you, Tula, Tula, I understand the goalkeeping, the art of goalkeeping. Because if I'm going to pick up the situation, you'll see, I mean, Barocca's games that they've lost, it was purely a... I'm an error from the goalkeeping but department. But Tobe Jani says, hey, I tried to take uh, Oscar in out during the season. I'm keeping a game of Vets, yeah. Bangsha 5. I'm keeping a game of Golden Errors, yeah. Bangsha 3. Yeah. So I'm just going to stay with my number one guy. Uh, being a coach, you must see what others don't see. So it's a good thing. So it's a good thing to see dissect and all that. Now we have it. Oscar in hasn't done well. Now Leopards could have got into this game. They could have got uh, at least an equalizer. Yeah, look at this. Zimu with a terrific header. That would have changed the whole complexion of the playoffs. It's, it's, impo it's important when you get this opportunity to score because yeah, the playoffs are once off and you're not going to get another oh. opportunity, opportunity like this. Oh. And unfortunately, the header it was on target, but it's the parliament last season. It didn't happen that way, and that is how the three points were secured for Barocca. A massive three points in the derby there. Prof, you got more from the game. What happened? That particular goal you were talking about here, once again, with the referee well positioned, and there's an advantage that, that occurs. And from this particular advantage, that goal results. Once again, it's all about positioning and at the same time giving the appropriate decision for the good of football. And in this case, advantage given, goal results. Excellent referee. Wonderful, yes. Mr. Ref. We like it when Prof is smiling like he's <laughs> smiling. He did not give a foul here where he could have stopped the game and Absolutely. said free kick. He said, play on. And he's there. And, and once again, he shows with both hands. You can show with one hand or both hands. In this case, because he was stationary, he showed it with both hands. If he's in an explosive run, he can show it with one hand. That was the game that took place midweek last week. On the weekend, there was another big encounter. It was Barocca up against Stellenbosch. Stellenbosch playing for their lives. Uh, and Barocca knowing that if they win this one, they knock Stellenbosch out of the equation for the premiership. So let's take a look at what took place there. There was a moment uh, where uh, the uh, free kick was taken. The ball ends up in the back of the net. Barocca take an early lead in this game. Two minutes into the match. I think I must give it to Barocca. I mean, the whole season, I think 50% of their goals, they come from standard situation. And they play precise ball into the box. Shaku, you know what makes this goal special is the fact that Ushaku Raniaki, you'll see it, will highlight it from from, from Engeli, a slow machine. I, I think for me, now, what, what confused it is that big run. Pe. No one is tracking the run. And Shaku now appears at Vela Sekai Wanu, Lynette Gamba, the celebrator. And it puts Barocca in, into a, a Gufeski and Bapeti confidence about going forward. That was a well worked free kick. And this is one of their strengths, Barocca. All season. 50% of the goals they've been scoring from standard situation. It tells me a practice, and I must commend Tobe Janota. Most, te most teams don't practice standard situations, but for him, Barocca, when it comes to this, they're doing it very well. I want to count as using his long as cool. My standard situation, uh, cool, man, I'm a free kick, I'm a corner, he's in the middle. Hey, standard situation. Hey. Then look at the chances here. Barocca continue to cause all sorts of problems. And you know what I like really about this Barocca side? Yeah. Is Willing runners. How yeah. many players are just willing to run? Mm. When the ball is at one of their teammates' feet, they're just willing to 
take a chance and get in the box. Good power, good power to say um, we're going to get there regardless of whatever happens. Even if we don't deliver, but also we must. Uh, you know, Look I like that to the I like post. how Baroka attacks. For me, everything they're doing is about penetrating. It's it's all about as Vulini show up because mo they have explosive speed and they can use it to their strength. And that's why they've been getting goals in, the, in these playoffs. Cleared off the line there by Said again, just so willing to get forward. But look here, there's no reason to start running here. But once he sees that his teammates have it, he's yeah. on his bike. Just unlucky not to score on that occasion. Yeah, but but up. he's so willing to run, Lutzwalo. Well. Yeah. He's willing to go. They don't give up. Trust me. If he, as long as he pulling out of the or out of out of play, they'll always challenge and they put pressure on your defenders. Two 0 victory, and that is how it was achieved on that day. Barocca beating Stellenbosch. Prof, you've got more. The very goal that you showed, Thomas, people are complaining that it came from an offside position. And, and how could Shaku be offside when he came from directly, I mean, from an onside position? And it's that wait and see technique that we always talk about. And let us see at the time the free kick is taken. We'll highlight Shaku there with a the tunnel that indicates that he's coming from an onside position. Then the, we have a line that indicates who's onside. Then Shaku came in from an onside position to play that ball. How can one claim Shaku to be? To be in an offside position at the time you make contact. At the time you make contact is not when we judge you to be on or offside. You may appear to be offside, but you were onside at the time the ball was played and you moved with the flight of the ball. Goal, absolutely perfect goal. Babes Bembe, thank you very much. After the break, we're going to be looking at Bafana Bafana hashtag. Bafana New Era is the hashtag you need to give us your insights on. But before we do that, let me quickly remind you that APSA's Ready to Work program allows you to get ready for the work environment. Don't miss out on the opportunity to upskill yourself and change your life. Register for the free online program at readytowork.apsa.co.za. Ready, set, go, now, prosper. Oh, Bafana, Bafana made us happy. Hashtag Bafana New Era is what it's all about. They beat Nigeria in Nigeria, go second in the group because, well, the other team well, had a huge encounter there with 5-0, Libya beating Seychelles. But for us, this was the performance we've been waiting for. This was the moment. Three points against Nigeria. It never happened before in the 13th game. It was a lucky 13 for us. Uh, let's take a look at that action and then analyze how it was that the new coach, Stuart Baxter, was able to unlock this Super Eagles team. Group B, South Africa now takes on one of their most intimidating opponents, a side that they have never beaten in a competitive fixture as both these sides begin their 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualifying campaign. Immediately won back there by Nigeria. It's inventive, it's industrious, and it's only just cleared by Batlele. Still alive, great opportunity steered wide by Ndidi. Mikul. Just looking to work this ball forward here. It's Tulani Khatwayo in the area who doesn't take control of his situation. Great on the run here. It's just wide. Etebo, so dangerous when he comes in to join the play. Egan Dolly looking to play it through for Longerman, who's uh, made a fine run. Can he deliver a telling cross again? Lack of support. It comes out for Akpe. He's lost it. South Africa can't score. Off the woodwork by Villarazi. Akpe. Finally, it's Kumbzan. It's who requalify us say there are 12 groups of four teams. Group winners automatically qualify for the finals. Go, 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 Cameroon. And the best. Finally, two! Kalagata! No, you don't pass him! Oh, Matoho can't find the clearance. The table takes full advantage, lays it off. Musa now. Just on the penalty arc, just slides it wide towards Coyote. Kone, busy, it's left for an open goal. Somebody eventually. Dean Furman. Ball into an area, danger area here. Again. 
Now, play on. Just needs to get past his man. It's heading toward the goal. Just tap it in. It's the call. And again, South Africa through the super sub, Percy Dow. Creates a little bit of magic in Nigeria. Chambers one was the Kwapuna Gamnanti, Pasca no Bushogale, Agasparaga Mash and Pasher, Ushago, Manyam, Namu Manyam. Oh, the Warriors of Zimbabwe started their quest for a fourth appearance at the Africa Cup of Nations finals against Liberia with a new look national team in their 2019 qualifier in Harare yesterday. Knowledge Musona took over the Zimbabwe captaincy for the Group G game after Willet Katsande, who had skipped the Warriors at this year's Nations Cup in Gabon, was dropped. Belgium-based Musona's first strike came on the 24th minute, with Zimbabwe taking that one-goal advantage into the break. His second came just five minutes into the second half, and the Warriors captain was able to celebrate his hat-trick with a goal in the 63rd minute. It was Zimbabwe's first hat-trick in 13 years. Peter Ndlovu was the last man to achieve the feat. The result puts Zimbabwe top of Group G after DR Congo beat Congo Brazzaville 3-1 on Saturday. Here we go. So this is how it looks. Bafana sits in second position there behind Libya. But that win away from home makes things so much easier for Bafana to qualify for 2019. He's a with a lot of confidence on top of it. Because also more Nigeria, what are we saying? Because they are also... We can afford to draw at home against Nigeria as long as we beat Seychelles home and away. Simnandi. To me. To me. Yeah? To me. Libya, see, we can also just afford things there. Marinate your order. It's so nice when we have that kind of mathematics to look at. Surprising starting lineup. You looked at it and thought, you Yeah, because he surprised me, especially Zungu and Zwana. I didn't think they'll start. I mean, you have Jali in the bench, who own a partnership, as much as the partnership here, can offer men. Mm. But I, I think the, the, the surprise also, it came in, it gave us the, the, the results. But what he's saying there is if you don't play enough at your club, yeah. I might call you, but I'm not going to start you. That's yeah. what happened with Jali. Serrero was left out completely for only playing five games at Ajax this season. Mm -hmm. This coach is not going to just select you, Nekab. No, well, he tracks you down and he also sees Guti, how sharp you are. And then, uh, because in training, that's why you see how uh, players are sharp. It might not be the same as the game, but you, you pick up Guti player, he's sharp. And I'm asking him to see Funa, but he thought Guti, maybe Guti Ali in this game, you know, by short Best player on the day, who was that for you? For me, Zwane was the best player, based on, he gave us a lot, especially when you have position of the ball. For me, it was this man, Tyson Tlachwai. Yeah. Because first half, yeah. he was absolutely brilliant. Look at this. Yeah. And Konza, you're a defender. Tell us what he was a tiger. He was a lion at the back. Yeah. Psychologically, I think was sacked up. in terms of in terms of head office. But I, I trust me, the captain is motivated to Tyson. Today, a good game day was. I a push a good game, and it, trust me, he made an um, interception that were key to us. And the fact that we didn't concede first half, I think it played an important role. And it, 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 it also to, it forced the United Nigeria now, but feeling frustrated. But you know what? A South Africa is keeping us on the back foot. Now, first half has, has kept South Africa into the game. And that the was the thing. Zero. You said something important there. He's normally very physical, yeah. normally wants to get quite aggressive. Yeah. But here, he was the captain who led Ukula. by example. Ukula. 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 I mean, the way he plays now, it's more even smarter. And he knows defending is not just about going to tackles. At times, it's just about the speed of the mind and how you position yourself, which for me, I would like Ukula. Well done, Skipper. Well done. There was, though, a small problem in defense. Yeah. He'll look at himself, I'm sure, as well. Mato is being highlighted there. Yeah. He didn't have the best game in defense. I think, I think ma, ma, for me, Mato, watching also the past uh, three games of Keza Chiefs before his season in Pell, I thought he lacked confidence, a crucial confidence, where as a defender, there are times where you just need to put your head in there. But he lacks that. But he's not a bad, a bad player. But I think he lacks that important confidence. And these games, pele, pele, these, pele, game, these games, we need his height. We need him. He presents Yaki because he's one among the best in terms of our center backs. Then the other yeah, big moment of the game was when uh, the coach, Stuart Baxter, decided that it was time for Percy Dow to get into the the game substitution taking place yeah. he says there well uh, Villa's already off the field I'm coming in first touch very important watch when you're sitting in the bench with the view of coming in he was sitting and waiting with okay and he is already off let me just see and, and because if we play all the situation we're defending a free kick here yes, then situation. Keegan Dolly gets the ball yeah first time doesn't waste time pa oh. I get everybody with them send numbers, but go Kora. So I was smart enough to say Shala, Sbabon would Baba Tula Manabazo Dilana. They couldn't. Everybody's saying maybe offside. 
but I, I believe it is not an offside. Okay, well, what rule we know is that you cannot be offside in your own half. Yeah. Here you see the line in the corner there on the right-hand side. Percy Tau is in his own half. Yeah. That ball is already nearly by him. It means when Dolly passed the ball, yeah. he was definitely in yeah. his own yeah. half. Yeah. So Anyone the rule at Sia Ziotina yeah. is that you cannot be offside in, in your, your own, own half. half. That's why all referee wati play mm. on. Hamanyo Kora, Gumnandi, no problem. That's what you think, right? Thanking your So that's what I think. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> Mondays <laughs> are going to possibly be made very miserable by El Professori. Prof, <laughs> don't tell me you have a different perspective to you cannot be offside I'm in your own I'm laughing because I'm happy. And there are new laws. We were in Pumalanga last new week at Bande. Yeah. And at the same time, referees, must say, Pumalanga, watch this. This is what we were discussing. Now, when that ball comes in, you will see what the referee is going to be in an explosive run. Once again, if you allow advantage, you will allow advantage with one hand. Look at that one hand. He's not using both hands because he's in an explosive run. So once again, we covered both the hands with one uh, hand being used in this case. However, let's come back now to indicate that, yes, at the time the ball was played, we can definitely indicate that he was behind or on the line. And if you are on the line, it's no man's land. You cannot be offside. So we are, without a shadow of a doubt, saying it without fear or favor or prejudice. That's a perfect goal. He <laughs> was hey. on side. <laughs> I know how to wind up, Thomas. And the advantage, look at this. The advantage, once again, the referee make sure that the advantage is given and it took two to three seconds before you could blow whether it was a goal and look at it once again one hand indicating that he is giving the advantage and the doxo even if he had committed that doxo he was because it's a hand pulling it was out red card red card he didn't need it and he has prof of zealand because nigerian <laughs> the dude said that was not allowed Bebeaz was Rasela. Bebeaz was I got Rasela. a lot of calls telling me it was offside. Ooh. It <laughs> is not an offside. We are saying it two without fear cash. or yeah. favor or <laughs> prejudice. Cash 2-0. Yeah. No change, no nothing. It's for us. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to uh, uh, Tokola Ranti. His goal was critical. He's one of those players that <laughs> normally doesn't necessarily finish every opportunity yeah. that he gets, but he was clinical here. Nine caps, uh, yeah. uh, he, he's 35 caps, 11 goals. This was the 11th goal of his career. Look at how good Rama is as well here. Look at Rama. I, I think what is key here, it's Temba Zwane tucking in, giving his space for, to vacate his That's space for Uzo Rama. And Rama is very, is very aware with the good space of Shielemina, which I need to use it. And now when he occupies it by means of a run and able to give us that good cross, numerically advantage that it gives us going forward it's called inverted footbacks that now they overlap and give um, options for 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 for, for a team going forward but i, I think just what has brought in their latitude layman we want to work hard and he does and that a lot for kaiser chiefs so you can see it coming in the national the team. whole season the mm. whole season has been doing it and trust me he's very fit eh? because the urama lobega limal and all that but now you can see with the mind petty fitness now, the other thing is, uh, as we look here at the combination play, Bafana, Bafana, this was something that we wanted to see more of. Peggy's turn, Demon. Yeah. This was the thing that we liked. This one didn't come off perfectly, but the confidence was there. South African football was being played. Confidence comes from, from players wanting to do it. Mentally, they are strong, understanding good. We need to do it for, for one page, one line. And you, from this game, you could see how much they wanted to do it. Uh, you, you look at this, Zwan was always in the politic of things. It was advancing play for us, interlinking the play for us, taking us forward and getting into final that entry, which is the most important thing, because the more he gets into that entry, the more he, I'm a are, are become a bit higher. And teams, they settle, but I ask Kupu, because obviously, there was Jovicho, there was Umnandi, there was, Jovicho, there, was Umnandi. Ah, there was even a penalty about dropping high, prof. We should have had a penalty, surely, I mean, I was complaining at home. Yes, we are going into it straight away. Um, what happens in this case, we will put that uh, Dolly penalty appeal, and when we go in there, you will see, uh, once again, referees that we were actually teaching over the weekend, look at that. He gives advantage once again. Dolly gets into the penalty area. He then dummies him, and the hands were used there. We will show you it once again without fear or favor or prejudice. Here he turns him inside out, Mala. turns, and look at the hands. Penalty referee. You, and it's inside the penalty area, and Babunkota, Mantembu, penalty. Jungwa Shilo, if the hands are used inside the penalty area, it's a penalty. Yeah.
It would have been soft, though. It would have been a bit soft. I'm a Yule. Leon was more Yule. Sneaker, sneaker, what was sneaker? Sneaker. All right. We've still got plenty more football for you, so let's move on and take a look at uh, what happened with the ABC Mutipe finals. There are two new teams making their way up to the NFD. And on this occasion, to qualify for that NFD, they did it before. This was to be the champion of the ABC Mutipe League and win 800,000 Rand in prize money. A very, very good afternoon and welcome to the ABC Mutsepe League National Final Playoffs. Yes, Utorati with a chance. Ball brought back, snapshot, Kiva. Impressive stuff. Bill Neal at Buffalo City Stadium. Joe? Utorati with a chance here to open the scoring. And uh, with that kind of shooting from uh, Gumada. Defense. It's been drilled by coach Ronnie Gabriel, who's been with the side since 2004. And listen to this statistic. They have lost only two games. Here's the opening. How close was that? Already spotting an area of concern. Possession being at the moment enjoyed by the Super Eagles uh, in green and white this afternoon. That uh, dribbling idea of not sharing the ball reminds me of uh, as they attack here. Yes, all together. This is the opening goal, and uh, it stands. And uh, Siamonga Vilane, the 30 year old from Nguaduma, he says, Gumanuo. Kogene Lukali Luzolega, Asko Neli Gebo, Jokubake, Kukangele Gangati, Asakona Mayamana, Gunana Yituba, Itali Lubepani. Wow. Header, what corner? Get from me and be Nana Yabo, he corner for Balen in Gogo. When the Baba Sevens is a two bin, but that doesn't hurt. Wow! Cross cutter. Because it's a sit the bottom and says Super Eagles. But we never want to have a Baba Tahoe. We never want to have a Baba Tahoe. Super Eagles. Mama Fellow Mabiki. How good is it? KZN football is doing very, very well. Otongati, they're getting a million rand, 200,000 they must give to a development program. But KZN football doing well. Yeah, also you consider Itanda and the they, they've done well. I think for me, the, the reason they're doing well is because the emphasis is on development and they're making sure with them. These are the two teams you'll see in the NFD next season from the Free State. We've got uh, the uh, one side and you've got the other team from KZN. APSA's Ready to Work program allows you to get ready for the work environment. Don't miss out on the opportunity to upskill yourself and change your life. Register for the free online program at readytowork.apsa.co.za. Ready, set, go. Now, prosper. It's time for the Mumish of the Week. Take a look and enjoy. Monday. I see. 
Axie, <laughs> Axie. There you go. That's the movie for you. There's some great action coming up for you over the weekend as well because it's the uh, FIFA Confederations Cup. Uh, we've also got South Africa up against Zambia coming up on uh, SABC One tomorrow. That game live. So look out for some of the new faces that Stuart Baxter promised uh, for the new look. Bafana Bafana. Sport at 10 on Wednesday night as usual has all the very best in terms of sports conversation. And then on the weekend, we take you to the FIFA Confederations Cup. Now remember, on radio you can catch every single one of the matches live there selected matches for you live on sabc sport on television but the fifa confederations cup russia 2017 is here i'm thomas mlambo thank you to dr mlandi and our professori see you again next week good night <laughs>